Hi, I'm Sarah Sproul. I'm an instructional designer at Roosevelt University. We're a small liberal arts school in downtown Chicago. We have about 5,000 students. Um, the school focuses on social justice, and, but we also have a fantastic performing arts program, PsyD program, and pharmacy program. So we have an eclectic bunch of faculty and students. Um, we purchased Analytics for Learn in June of 2015, and I joined Roosevelt as their instructional technology specialist about one week after their initial training on A4L. So I had some catching up to do. Um, luckily, I had a coworker who took the lead on working with the pyramid and building the dashboards. Um, and I was the one who took the lead on working with the course analytics portion of the product. Um, the slides you're going to see from me today are from a professional development session that I give to our faculty about the course analytics tool that Brian touched on before. Um, so these are kind of just uh, kind of background slides and um, uh, it's been a bit of a bumpy road of getting our instructors, deans, departments, chairs to utilize data from Blackboard and A4L to improve their student experiences, outcomes, and student engagements. So we decided to approach the course analytics tool a little differently. Uh, instead of just training instructors on which buttons to push and how to turn it on or off, or just turn the tool on, themselves, on, on ourselves and let everybody just kind of run with it, um, we decided that um, we were going to build a professional development session around a topic that would be interesting and helpful for them. In this case, it is to identify struggling students early on in the course before it's too late to help them succeed uh, by using the course analytics tool, but also using other tools in that evaluation link in the course. We start the session by showing them how to turn on the tool within their course. The reason I make them do that is twofold. It gives me an opportunity to gauge how familiar they are with the course management menu. Um, and when we check to see if the tool is turned on, it gives me an opportunity to introduce them to the evaluation tab and the power of all the tools and reports that are located there. I found out that a lot of our instructors thought the evaluation tab was where they would be evaluated, and that's not the case. Once the tools turn on, I walk them through each of their reports, giving kind of a brief summary of what each report can tell them, and I also go over some of the information in the reports that the instructors might find confusing. Um, I go over the definitions for the terms like interaction, submission, and accesses, and how they differ, uh, because the way Blackboard categorizes an interaction is completely different than what a faculty member actually thinks it is. Um, we also have to explain that minutes are just minutes. They're not active minutes. Someone could turn on the, you know, turn on Blackboard, load up their course, and walk away for an hour, and then come back and be like, wow, this student was in here for 60 minutes, but didn't actually do anything. Um, I also have to explain what the colors, arrows, and other symbols mean, uh, because there's red and green and um, the red makes people panic and they don't understand what that means. Um, and I also have to explain how the data might appear differently depending on what part of term their course runs in. We're working to fix it, but we have over 10 parts of term within a semester. So our full semester is 16 weeks, but the online courses are only 12 weeks right now, and we have eight-week courses, but the data that's in these reports is collected for an entire semester. So a lot of times, as you'll see in here, nothing happens until week two because this is an online course. And it's not because the students don't want to be in there, it's that they actually can't be in there. We don't give them access to the course until the first day that their course starts. Um, after we've gone over the reports, I show them the retention center. And when we go over this tool, I like to help them brainstorm about how they might use the tool to make their jobs easier, um, because they, all faculty like to hear how to do that. Um, I go over you know, contacting specific students through the tool and how to manually track any students who they want to appear on the list. So they might have had a student in a previous course who struggled and isn't really showing up on that list right away, but they want to keep an eye on them or they want to keep an eye on some of their star students to really see what they're doing better. <laughs> and then the tricky part. Um, I, after we go over the tracking of the students, I like to talk to the instructors about the instructor activity portion of the tool. And I highlight how important it is for instructors to stay active in the course because students notice when the instructors disappear. I also like to talk to them about you know, going to the evaluation tab and going to the retention center as soon as they log into the course. It gives them a great overview of how their students are doing, and then it also gives themselves an overview of how they're doing in the course. They can kind of, at a quick glance, see 
When was the last time I contacted the students? When did I post an announcement? How much stuff do I have left to grade? And um, after they kind of get over the initial shock and we explain to them that we're not tracking them, um, this is for their own personal use to make their jobs easier, they, um, they really like it. They especially like being able to email the students directly from that tool. Um, a lot of our instructors, you know, kind of, they, they can have, you know, 50 students or three students, but being able to just click right through there and send the student an email really makes their job easier. I like to wrap up the session by talking about the importance of the instructors interpreting data. So for example, a student is spending 2,000 minutes in the course and the rest of the students are only spending about 1,000 minutes. The student's only getting a C and so this gives them a great opportunity to reach out to them early on and find out what is going on. Why are they spending so much more time in the course? And what the instructor can do to help the student struggle less and improve their skills. Maybe the student really needs to read things really slowly. Maybe they do better with aud you know, auditory learning. Maybe they're visual learners. Maybe they like to pull up everything and write down all the notes. What I really try to push is why the data isn't meant to replace their gut feelings about student performance. I think faculty are scared of data because they think it's gonna replace you know, their intuition, and that's not the case. As an instructor, they know who is struggling and who isn't, but the data is a great place to start when they need to begin the conversation with the struggling student. They can show them the data and talk about what they're currently doing and what their classmates are doing, and they can develop a plan to help the students succeed. Thank you. Thank you.